speed with part three of where we started the series two build. Um, I've been a bit lacking on getting the camera out, but I went to put the engine in after we've done all the axles previously, uh, and we've come to the conclusion best to bring it home. So we put it in the back of the AT and brought it home. Now there's a lot of work that needs doing to it. I have um, got a clutch. I'm going to replace it with. Uh, change the fan from the military style fan to a more standard fan. Um, Going to put an alternator on it. Um, give it a bit of TLC. Just give it a check over really before we drop it in. Um, clean it up. Drop that in. And then the big bit that's been happening is work on the bulkhead. Now it was in a bit of a state. It had been shot blasted before I had it. Um, and then not do anything with and it's got a layer of surface for us. So I had the bulkhead welded up and then um, reshot blasted and primed. While the friend working on the bulkhead, um, put a filler on it, sanding it down, getting it just right. Um, and that's not far off uh, the paint. Now in the last video I did mention it'd be blue, but I've come to the conclusion that it's gonna stay green. Just the ease of most of the panels already being green, it's going to stay the green, which is a colour I like anyway. I've also got to get a alternator bracket, which is proven quite tricky. But no, it won't be too far until the engine goes back in. Taking the engine back after a bit of work. It's a bit wet though, but we're going to take it back to the shed. Roughly set it in place. Yeah, so I can start bolting all the ancillaries onto it. And yeah, get ready for the bulkhead and box to go in. Engine is back in, we dumped that in the other day. I bought a rear crank seal, which having taken a flywheel off, I'm not going to bother doing because it's completely dry. Uh, it looks like it's been done previously, so I'm not going to worry about it. Gonna put the flywheel back on, uh, just get a bit of the surface rust on it, clean it off. And then I have to torque it back off. I've borrowed a torque wrench for that. Then I've got a new clutch and a new clutch pressure plate to go on with the um, shaft at the end of the gearbox to help line line the whole lot up. Bad news, my um, my face is filthy. My DSLR is at home on charge. My GoPro just ran out of battery, so on my phone. So. Tighten up the flywheel bolts to 65 pound foot, 65 pound foot, and then the clutch on. Gearbox mounts just put in. Moved the gearbox over this morning in the back of the car, which was a bit of a 
bit of a job, but it works all right. Uh, next job's gearbox in. Um, and then hopefully the bulkhead should be coming this afternoon. Now on the gearbox, um, I did rebuild the handbrake, uh, speedo cable, and I just generally cleaned it up. Also checked the shims on the gear between the transfer box and the main box, um, just because they wear over time, just to check them out of play. That's all set up and the whole thing's cleaned and some paint on it. It just started chucking it down, so I'm back in the shed, but I've had a bit of a game trying to get it to line up. Just took the, the mounts on the chassis off, just to give me a bit more room. Um, and all of a sudden it's gone and gone on, so. I'm going to tighten it up, pull, pull the whole lot together um, and then I'll try and get the mounts and the chassis back on, just lift the back of the gearbox and then just pivot the whole thing, um, get them on and just set it down. Right, as you can see, uh, bulkhead's in. Um, however, I've been having trouble getting the Gearbox in. Now the mounts that go from the gearbox to the gearbox cross member beneath don't line up with the um, holes, with the holes on the rubbers. I'm pretty sure the bulkhead's in the right place because um, the stays, the galvanised stays that I put on, the holes all line up. So to check that it's not the engine mounts that are wrong, I'm going to put the um, gearbox tunnel on. And if the hole on the gearbox tunnel for the gear lever lines up, it means the engine mounts in the right place. Now, if they don't line up, then the engine mounts in the wrong place. So, if the engine mounts are in the right place, I'm going to have to re-drill the holes on the gearbox mounts, which hopefully shouldn't be too much of an issue. We're thinking the cross member, the gearbox cross member, has been replaced. It's a bit of a thing prone to rust because the outriggers of bits have been replaced. And it looks like the cross member has as well, meaning that. If it's ever so slightly off, it makes get putting the gearbox in a bit harder. So, I'm going to try these reposition mounts. Yes! Yes! I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! I'm it. sweating it. It's like 35 degrees out. So, this front pulley, the military style one, which has got the um, three slots rather than the standard one with two, I have been really struggling to get it off. My initial idea was, once the engine and box are in, get a prop shaft on it, put it in gear, chock it all up, put it in like fourth high, get a big spanner on it and see if it will go. But in the end, it's just, it's meant to be the tightest, um, tightest part on a whole Land Rover. And I haven't got any sockets big enough, but I got a, a big adjustable, which was okay, but I don't really like using adjustables, but I thought I'd give it a go. But the slack in the drivetrain, and when I chocked, when I chocked um, one of the wheels, the slack in the pressure in the tyres meant I was just sort of compressing the engine, and I hadn't really got it locked completely. So my next option was, which um, I wasn't really sure on, after a little bit of research, I thought I'll take the sump off, and I saw someone else do it where they took the sump off and they chopped the, they sort of locked the bottom end of the engine so just literally removes any play whatsoever and then got the adjustable the large adjustable on it um, pretty large I've got to do this because the circumference of that front pulley is different to the standard one so when I put my alternator on my fan belt won't fit uh, and also can't put my radiator and radiator panel on until I've done this and well now it's done this we're good to go and I can sort of make some progress now. So I'm going to conclude this as the end of part three. So quite a lot of progress has happened really. Got the engine box in, bulkhead on slash in. Um, done a load of jobs and it's starting to come together really. Wrap this up as that section of the build. Um, at the moment I'm working on cleaning up the clutch pedal. I'm not going to, at the moment, use the brake pedal that I've got because I want to try and source a brake pedal box with the mounts for a 
servo to mount on top rather than um, not having a servo or having a remote servo. Um, I should have the loom ordered soon enough, that'll take quite a while to come, but it's better to do in the meanwhile. Uh, I want to get all the clutch set up, uh, start getting the throttle linkage in, and the steering box, which is a job to do. Uh, in the next part, I'll begin working on all the dash and all the uh, pedals and stuff, start putting some, some parts on and yeah, hopefully have it started soon enough which will be a big moment, who knows if it runs because well I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't.